Anybody who has seen this clip from the movie What the Bleep Do We Know can't help but be bothered by this apparent schizophrenic, dualistic nature of the electron. As Dr. Quantum alludes, the idea that the electron somehow knows when it's supposed to act like a particle and when it's supposed to act like a wave is troubling. Further, this idea that electrons as well as photons somehow know when they're being observed by conscious human beings sounds more like something conjured by the mind of Rod Serling and the magisterial mystics of quantum voodoo than an idea that is supposed to form the foundation of our modern laws of physics. So what's the truth here? Are the electron and the photon particles or waves? Are they actually neither or are they a little bit of both? I think there's a solution to this conundrum. I think there's a far less spooky and much more straightforward explanation. The real problem is a problem of imagination. Let me explain. I discuss in my book, Evolving Towards the Truth, as evolved primates, when it comes to trying to explain some strange phenomenon, we naturally prefer to look for analogies in our everyday world. Analogies that we can relate to and physically empathize with. Consequently, when it comes to trying to understand the behavior of light and electrons, we naturally gravitate to ideas like teeny tiny particles as well as waves of water because of their familiarity. However, the mental effort required to somehow crowbar both of these disparate ideas into one single image or one concept is not trivial. So the best we can do is say that we're not sure what these photons and electrons are, but sometimes they act like particles, and sometimes they act like waves. And the schizophrenic nature freaks us out. It would sure make our intellectual work much easier if we had a better analogy for photons and electrons, or a better mental image of what's really going on. And that's what I want to do here. I want to present my idea, my theory about the nature of photons and how a photon behaves. Although the segment from the movie What the Bleep Do We Know considered electrons, when it comes to experiments with slits, they both behave very similarly. Consequently, in this video, I'm going to focus the discussion on photons. First, I'm going to present my idea of what they are and how they generally behave, and then demonstrate how this new depiction despookifies their behavior when they encounter slits. When photons are launched through space, they generally travel in straight lines. However, as they're traveling, they're also oscillating or reverberating in some manner. So rather than depicting them as static little BB-like bits of inanimate matter, I think it makes more sense to visualize them as oscillating in some manner. This is what a single photon might look like if it was gliding through space. This one is portrayed as being polarized in a single vertical plane. That is, all of the oscillatory motion is happening in a vertical plane. This is what it would look like if it was coming directly at you. Here's a depiction of a photon that's polarized in a horizontal plane. This one's polarized in a diagonal plane. We also understand that some photons are circularly or elliptically polarized, meaning that the plane of oscillation is rotating kind of as if they're corkscrewing through space in a helical manner. This is a depiction of how that might appear. Now I want to say that I'm not proposing that this general geometry is exactly how photons look. What I'm really doing is offering or presenting a very general sketch. But nonetheless, a sketch that hopefully offers a more accurate mental image of what's really going on and a sketch that is far less spooky or implausible than our current disjointed and incompatible dualistic version. A version where the photon is somewhat schizophrenic, sometimes a rather dead, inanimate, solid little particle, and sometimes just the opposite, a spread out, distributed, everywhere at once conjecture. So the general idea is that photons are like oscillating nanoscopic swarms of energy, kind of like the orbital clouds of electrons that surround atoms. Since our minds prefer analogies, we could imagine that photons are somewhat like the blobs of matter found within lava lamps. They have a type of material cohesiveness or surface tension that wants to keep them together, but they're also very energetic, dynamic, and oscillating. They oscillate at their natural frequency. Red ones oscillate at about 460 million million cycles per second, and X-rays oscillate at about 800 billion million cycles per second. 
I now want to describe what I think is happening when photons hit things like slits. Instead of starting with an actual slit, let's start with half a slit, or a knife edge, or a razor blade. This is the image you get if you shine a laser directly at the center of a razor blade. Instead of getting a clean image of a half a dot, the light actually smears out or diffracts in both directions. In this case, when each photon hits the razor, it's as if part of the photonic swarm has to deal with the blade while the rest keeps going unimpeded. But because of the elastomeric nature and because photons want to stay together, they kind of get spun around and wing off at different angles, depending upon how severely they hit the blade, or depending upon what their actual geometric orientation is when they happen to hit the blade. However, in general, for this case, we can say that the photon has only been mildly impaired. Let's now look at what happens when photons hit a single slit or a single thin wire. This is the image you get with a single slit. And this is the image you get with a single wire. They're both very similar to the image we saw with the razor blade, except that they have these interesting voids or dark bands. I'm going to contend that these voids aren't the result of photons having the ability to interfere with themselves, but rather due to a type of quantum effect that happens at the slit. Unlike the case with the razor blade, where I said the photons were mildly impaired, the geometry of the slit and the wire imposes some additional burden on the photons. In essence, this more challenging geometry forces the photons into a second or more severe category. Unlike the simple razor blade, the slit and wire must apparently distort, stretch, or reconfigure the photons in some significant way as they squeeze through the slit. When they emerge, they quickly regain their pre-slit photonic composure. However, this distortion and reconfiguring exacts a price upon it. Like the case with the razor blade, it's had to change its direction. But unlike the case for mildly impaired photons, which can seemingly change in any direction, these severely distorted photons can only change their direction in specific increments. And there are apparently certain directions that are forbidden. The two parameters or variables that dictate which angles are forbidden are the width of the slit and the oscillating frequency or wavelength of the photon. And this is where the real quantum nature of photons comes into play. When it comes to atoms and the electrons of atoms, we learned back in the early 1900s that these electrons are not like little planets orbiting the sun. No, they're more like little swarms of electrical potential or energy, and they apparently can't exist anywhere in relation to the nucleus. No, they're confined to certain prescribed locations or orbitals. There are zones that are allowed and zones that are forbidden. When atoms gain or lose energy, they can only do so in discrete quantities or quanta of energy. The specific amount of energy corresponds to the amount of energy needed to either boost an electron up to a higher state or the amount required to allow an electron to fall to a lower state. The electrons can't change continuously or gradually. No, the laws of our universe seem to imply that they have to change in discrete steps. Certain locations within the atom are apparently forbidden. And I theorize that the same non-continuousness, the same discrete quanta only law, applies to photons as well. Once they go through a small slit that is sufficiently small in relation to the photon size and frequency, the trajectory of their output path will be altered. But just as in the case of the electron, the photons can't be deflected in any old angle, but only in certain allowable angles. And that's why or how a stream of photons or a single photon can exhibit an interference pattern. It's not interfering with itself or interfering with a virtual photon that will be there in some virtual future. No, it's just being bound by certain behavioral laws, such that whenever it undergoes more than a certain threshold of deformation or distortion, it's forced to change its direction, but only by certain allowable amounts. So, just as electrons apparently exhibit a type of natural, granular behavior in atoms, I think it's just as natural to imagine that photons also exhibit a type of granular, stepwise, quantum behavior when they encounter slits or wires. Well, my 10 YouTube minutes are just about up. Thanks for watching my video. I'm looking forward to your comments.